Hi, this is Jeff from Obedia, and in this tutorial, I'm going to talk about the I.O. setup window in Pro Tools. This is a window that causes a lot of confusion in many Pro Tools users, and that's precisely why I'm going to cover it in detail in this tutorial. So first of all, what the I.O. setup does is it lets you choose, configure, and label all the inputs and outputs, as well as internal buses on your current system for a more organized workflow in general. The way to find this window is go to the Setup drop-down menu, then I.O. And we've got six different tabs here that we're going to talk about. First of all, the input tab. These are all the inputs available on your system. In this case, I have a Focusrite Liquid Sapphire 56, which has a total of 28 inputs as well as 28 outputs in the IO setup of Pro Tools. So in case you have a situation where you're, you know, none of these things make sense, you've got a session from someone else and it's showing their IO, you can easily just select the bottom output shift click the top one and hit delete path. You're going to get a message here that says these are currently being used, but that's fine. Just delete them and then hit default. And this will show the exact inputs for your particular system. Now, be aware if you did have some particular bus routings that are important to your mix, you may not want to just delete all these. You may need to go through them individually to see what's what. You can, of course, just build your IO one path at a time and you would just do this in the I.O. setup, utilizing the available paths that your interface provides. Finally, you can also import settings and you can also export your custom I.O. setups as well as a file. As you can see here, these are some of the stock ones that come with Pro Tools and later recall them quickly in case you do have your install of Pro Tools get overwritten by another session's I.O. setup. Now moving on to outputs. Just like the name says, these are all the available outputs on my system. Again, I can select from the bottom and then shift click or just simply hit Control A Windows or Command A if you're on Mac OS. Just select them all, delete, and then hit default to refresh my settings. The next tab over is the bus tab. This lets you create and edit internal mix buses and output buses. And it also lets you map output buses to output paths. The next page we'll check out is the insert page. This one lets you create and edit hardware insert signal paths for the Pro Tools mixer. In other words, you can go ahead and route audio through any external device connected to parallel inputs and outputs of your audio interface, thereby letting you process audio from that hardware in real time and print it to a track. This is very useful if you're going to be moving from studio to studio and they don't have the same equipment in each facility. So what you basically do is just print the outputs of those inserted hardware effects processors. Next, we have the mic preamps page. This helps you configure any Avid Pre units that you have. This is a 8-channel mic pre or any other 8-channel mic pre that allows you to map its inputs via MIDI. Finally, we've got the hardware insert delay compensation page. This page lets you compensate for any delay or latency that might come up in your system when using external hardware devices such as an effects unit or even a MIDI sound module, if that's what you're using to create music. And to use it, you can set the amount of hardware insert delay in milliseconds for each device. These will then be used by Pro Tools' built-in delay compensation engine to timeline your input paths when the insert's in use and delay compensation is enabled. This has been a quick overview of the Pro Tools I.O. setup window. I hope you find it useful when it comes time to configuring your system or particular sessions that you're working on. So this is Jeff from Obedia. Thanks for stopping by. Mm -hmm.